Uh, kia ora tato. Welcome to Making Ourselves Visible um, Report. Um, my name is Kevin Honry from uh, Tifana Funda Trust, and um, my role today basically is to open our hui. Um, but before I do that, um, with a very simple um, karakia, I just want to acknowledge um, the um, support of uh, Ora Tamariki in this particular um, project. Um, and acknowledge the, the leadership team um, at Oranga Tamariki for working with community um, to produce this report. So in saying that, uh, I'd like to open our hui with a, a very simple karaki as I've mentioned. It says, may peace be widespread, may the seas be like green stone. A pathway for all us all this day, let us show respect for each other, for one another, bind us all together. Uh, in te reo, Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa paunamu te moana. Hei huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai. Tātou i a tātou katoa, haumi e, hui e, tāi ki e. I now hand it over to Mora to take us through this presentation. Kia ora. Kia ora, Kevin. Thank you so much. And welcome to all of you who are joining us online. Today we're launching a community-led research report with a series of recommendations about how Oranga Tamariki could and should change their systems and practices to better support the Katapui and Rangatahi, Rainbow Rangatahi and Kia. Um, our research really backs up what our Takatapui and Rainbow communities have known for a long time, that too often Takatapui and Rainbow young people in Kia are not safe and supported in their identities. They have needs for healthcare and social support that aren't being well met. Um, and too often they're experiencing abuse and care still. Um, we also heard through our research that when Takatapui and Rainbow Rangatahi and Kia were supported and loved, whether that was by their social worker, by a care worker, by a foster family, by even just one adult, um, that that was really life-changing. So with this report, we're calling for Oranga Tamariki to comprehensively transform care systems by prioritizing cultural safety, inclusive practice, and really upholding the mana and self-determination of Takatapui and Rainbow Rangatahi. Rangatahi. This project was um, developed with the community design team. You can see some faces um, on the Zoom screen at the moment, and we'll all introduce ourselves um, following on from the presentation, but was really led by um, Point and Associates with support from Tifana Fana Trust as well. Um, I'm gonna hand over from hand over to Jules um, from Point and Associates to share a bit more about who all was involved in this piece of work. Um, kia ora koutou and welcome again. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, today I have the honour of acknowledging the individuals and organisations whose amazing mahi has brought us to this moment. Um, first and foremost, we extend our deepest acknowledgement to the Ranatahi who shared their experiences and wisdom with us. Um, they invested their time and emotional energy to pay the path for a better future for all Takatāpui and Rainbow Ranatahi and care. Um, we extend our gratitude to Tafanafana and Kevin Honui. We were so fortunate to receive their guidance throughout the project. And a special recognition must be given to the research team. Albert, Cara and Josh, their commitment, expertise and passion have been the driving force behind the success of this project. And together with the community design team, Kevin, Moira, John, Tommy, Maggie and Ahi, they formed the dream team. And their collaboration and efforts enrich this report, and it offers a new standard for community-driven projects. We'd also like to express our gratitude to the voices of children and young people, Oranga Tamariki team, um, Ate, Rhiannon, Marie and Kitty, for their constant support and unwavering advocacy. We also had so much support from youth and Takatāpui and Rainbow organisations, Oranga Tamariki Kaimahi, Whakarunga Mai and Iwi Services. They connected us to Rangatahi and they provided ongoing support as they participated in the project. And lastly, thanks to you all for coming along today. Um, I'm now passing back to Moira. Kia ora. Kia ora. And I've just got a few sort of Zoom housekeeping notes before we move into the presentation. 
Um, as I said earlier, most of our community design team is here. We'll get everyone to introduce themselves a bit later when we move into our panel discussion, but you might see them popping up in the chat as well. Um, today's session is being recorded. You can um, share it with people afterwards or watch again if you'd like to. Um, we're going to have a presentation about the report and then introduce the wider group to share some thoughts um, and also answer some questions from you as the audience. So feel free to um, add any thoughts or questions or introductions um, to the chat. Uh, we've also got the Q&A section open if you'd prefer to ask a question anonymously. Um, but you're welcome. Yeah, in the meantime, please do feel free to introduce yourself in the chat so we know where you're coming from. The full report, the slides that we're sharing today and a list of other resources will be available on the Tingako Kahukura website after this and we'll email them through to everybody who's registered and attended. So with that, that all said, um, I'd like to hand over to Albert and Kara to hear a bit more about our research process, about what we heard from young people and what we're recommending to Oranga Tamariki. Kia ora. Just quick intros before we start. Um, my name is Kara Mackey. I fuck a papa to Northland, to Taitokoro, and grew up all over the Motu. I'm currently based in Tamaki Makoto. Um, yeah, I've been part of the community design design team for this mahi over the past couple years. Um, Kia I'm Albany Lockie. You may know me as Albert. Um, I, where was I going? I am Jewish Irish, <laughs> care experienced things, <laughs> don't know. But um, I grew up in Auckland and I've also been involved in this project as a peer researcher for how long have we even been on this? 18 months now? I think it's right on two years. Right on two years. Sweet. Okay, so I'm just going to share screens for the PowerPoint and um, Apologies in advance, I was not born to be good at um, the internet. Kara, you're on uh, silent. So start again, please. How does this keep Sorry. happening to us? Um, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, they can Sweet. hear us. Okay, good. Okay. At the time of commissioning this project, Oranga Tamariki had no system systematic way to identify the number of Takatapui and Rainbow Tamariki and Nangatahi in contact with or in the care of Oranga Tamariki. Um, we want to acknowledge the many Takatapui and Rainbow folk who have engaged with Oranga Tamariki before this project and who were instrumental in bringing the project into existence. Um, we want to make you to the original community design team project um, led by a community design team with peer researchers and point and associates, um, which were our project navigators. Um, we partnered with Te Whana Whana, the project Kaitiaki, um, for mentorship and guidance. Um, like we said, we've been working on this for around two years now. Um, and our project took place in two stages. Um, stage one was the community dis design team developing the project plan um, and the engagement approach. And step two was engaging with Rangatahi and sharing the insights and recommendations. Um, our research question was, what do Takatapui and Rainbow Rangatahi want Oranga Mariki to know about them and their experiences of care? So we interviewed nine Rangatahi for this project. They were aged between 14 and 23 years old and my notes are in Latin. <laughs> anyway, um, so at the time of the interview, seven of our participants were still in care. The distribution was we had five Māori, um, one Samoan, and that's not the right way to refer to that. <laughs> it's been like five Māori Tangata, one Samoan Tangata and three park here. Uh, so eight identified as trans or non-binary and one identified as cisgender. And we had a range of identities, uh, pansexual, not bisexual and queer. No one 
inter identified as intersex or having a variation of sex characteristics, but we didn't ask that explicitly. They lived in cities, towns, and rurally all across Aotearoa and had a range of care experiences, uh, some youth justice with carers, residences, group homes, emergency care, and transitions. Um, the community design team valued kaitiakitanga, manakitanga, um, whanaungatanga, and nangatiratanga. Um, we approached this mahi with a very safety, consistent, and critical lens. Um, we recruited through Voice Whakarunga Mai, um, various organisations, kai mahi and partners, purposefully so that we knew rangatahi had existing reports, uh, supports going into this. Um, we had a pastoral care team, um, voice and clear safety protocols. Rangatahi are consistently kept in touch with by point principal researcher, um, Jules. Alrighty, so we recruited through Voice Whakarunga Mai, uh, Tako Takatapui and Rainbow Youth Organisations and through Oranga Tamariki Kaimahi and Support Partners. We had our pastoral care team, as mentioned, we're a team of three volunteers and made up of psychologists and a therapist. So the pastoral care team is still continuing to be available to Rangatahi who participated in this project. For our method, we used photo elicitation as our data collection method, where uh, we invited Rangatahi to use photos that they were taken by or chosen by them so that that would generate the conversation in the interviews about what they want Orangatamariki to know about their them and their experiences being Takatapui and Rainbow and Kit. So the interviews were peer-to-peer, -peer, so you didn't do any, was it? It was me and Josh, and we had Jules in the background to support uh, the Rangatahi and us as peer researchers and respond to any disclosures of abuse, neglect or harm which made it feel a lot safer. Um, and the data analysis had already begun during the interviews with the collaboration between the Rangatahi and the peer researchers. We were already identifying themes there, but then the interviews were transcribed and de-identified, so nothing that can be traced back to our participants. Um, and then the community design team and Point met for a day and we did the initial coding analysis, theming, and just refining what's going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and this next slide is just a look at the um, information and consent forms that we created for um, our young people. It's just a really good example of um, ensuring that information given to Rangatahi are actually accessible. Okay, the research has some limitations. Um, we had no participation from Tamariki under the age of 14. Um, like we said earlier, the design team were really conscious of creating um, a safe and supportive environment for our participants. And with the resources that we had at the time, we didn't think that um, we would be able to create the same type of support for people under the age of 14. Um, it's a non resident representative sample. Um, there is a lack of diversity and participation in some dem demographics. We're missing um, the voices of Pacifica, migrants, refugees and asylum seekers. Um, we had difficulty in recruiting more Takatapui and Rainbow Rangatahi. Uh, in relation to research and things that are very connected to the government when it comes to care experienced people, um, interacting with things like this aren't necessarily safe um, and it takes the building of a relationship and ongoing mahi in building that relationship for people to um, feel a sense of safety in the whakaro that they're sharing. Um, and there is a potential for incomplete and biased representation of experiences. We are very aware that from the voices that we were able to hear of, um, hear from, they were probably the people that had the most support around them. Mm. Um, and that that is like, yeah. Pretty you're more fine. likely to actually want, tangent, yeah. well, no, it's you're more likely to come talk to us if you're not actively recovering from the trauma. Yeah, young people 
you know, even the ones who talked to me talked about how difficult it was for them to be there and to share that and bring that up, but they felt the importance of it. But I can understand it being really hard for a lot of young people to talk about this. So, I mean, the lack of a sample size we had is actually also indicative of our findings in yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, so where is our slide? Here is our slides. So here is talking about our findings. So Rangatahi Takatapui who want or Rangatamariki to know that being Takatapui is different from being non-Māori and Rainbow. And I probably shouldn't have done this slide, should I? I was going to laugh about this slide. Do you want to go first? Do you like the rest of the slide? I'm, 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 I'm okay. I'm taking the next slide. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, Rangatahi Takatapui were almost exclusively cared for by non-Māori carers. And the alienation and disconnection from their culture also impacted their takatāpui identities. Um, I think our study really emphasised the need for education around intersectional identities and um, the support needed to properly afi those, those tangata through their journeys. And now we're taking this slide. So absence of trust and connection with social workers, a lack of rainbow training experience for carers and kaimahi and failure to uphold rights and care were all contributing factors to abuse. You know, a lot of us, multiple of the rangatahi we interviewed had multiple social workers during their time in care. It took a lot of time to build those safe and affirming connections. And social workers, care home and resident staff and carers often appeared to have little training or experience with trans, non-binary and queer rangatahi, they were often expressing that they were having to inform their carers of their life, of what their identity was even, um, things that they should already be able to understand coming into this role. Mm -hmm. um, and most rangatahi were unaware of their rights and because of this, uh, this did not <laughs> bring up what... Hang on, sorry, my brain is getting scrambled again. Most of them were unaware of their rights and because of this, they didn't bring up what was going on in the homes with that kind of abuse and neglect and lack of understanding because they didn't realise, you know, they had a right to those resources and things. Sweet. Um, I think you should speak on this one. Yes, actually, this is one of my ones. So access to gender affirming health care and rainbow responsive care was extremely varied from person to person, but it was largely dependent on their own personal skills of advocacy or the whether that was the kaimahi working with them or the rangatahi themselves. If you didn't have somebody who knew what your rights were and what was going on, you were very unlikely to be able to access support. We spoke to one young person who um, was approved for gender affirming care on every level, but blocked by a social worker, like, um, which is very common. That is far more common than you would think it is. Um, we found that our rangatahi were not feeling safe and supported in their identities. Um, there was ongoing normalised trans, bi and homophobic and interphobic microaggressions, um, which included struggling or refusing to use pronouns, misgendering, and one kiwa the tororangatahi that they might become um, a pedophile because of their sexuality. Others had to explain ad nauseum what transgender meant, and they often found themselves educating kaimahi and their carers. Where are we up to? <laughs> so... What did work well, what we found worked well for Rangatahi was having those supportive and affirming connections. The Rangatahi in this project told us that where they were currently living was safe. Was that all of our Majority. Of Majority of our participants yeah. at this point. Um, and that they had people around them who affirmed their sexuality and gender identity. So, you know, they felt understood, respected, and loved for who they are, which is just so important. The important connections for support and affirmation were coming from uh, kaimahi, especially social workers, transition and youth workers, caregivers, foster whanau, peer groups, uh, including rainbow support groups, voice bakorongamai and other youth groups, from counselling, from care partner kaimahi, so positive experiences, sharing their sexuality and gender identities just 
when you have people around you who will affirm who you are and accept who you are and understand who you are and you don't have to keep fighting for that, that is life-changing. Those positive connections and relationships are Mm -hmm. life-changing. I just wanted to correct myself. It wasn't majority. It was all of all of our participants um, indicated that they were in safe and supportive homes, which I think, Mm. again, just adds to that point that we're hearing from the best experiences exactly. of our community which is even with yeah. even with protections in place to anonymize data if you're still actively experiencing those things you are very unlikely to want to speak out about it um rangataki said that connection and support from others contributed to them feeling secure loved and celebrated they talked about what it felt like to not just be accepted but also celebrated um, I think this is a really big point when you're growing up in your family, your whānau, um, like your birth whānau. Um, in the best of like situations, you have a group of people around you that love and support you and, and it's fragmented by that experience of care and being able to trust that that is inherently there in your living situation. Mm-hmm. So... Pākāpū and Rainbow Rangatahi very obviously wants to see real changes from their voices into this project. They, several of Rangatahi talked about participating in this project because they wanted to see things be better for other Pākāpū and Rainbow Rangatahi. Because, yeah, I mean, that's what motivated people to speak to us, the ones who did. It's that hope for a better future. I think it's what motivated us to be part of this project as well. Mm. And I think that's a big, like, total go to our community about how um, willing to involve themselves in the mahi they are to ensure that it is better for our, our mokopono and people, people that are coming after us. Mm-hmm. Um, there are recommendations. Would you like to quick fire or should we? We can go quick with this. Okay, we'll quick fire our recommendations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recommend that Oranga Tamariki, am I doing all of them or are we going back and forth? Yeah, do all of them. Okay. Develop culture and systems to ensure Oranga Tamariki is safe. The organization for Taktapu and Rebo Orangatahi put policies, practices, and training in place so Kaimahi can work safely and confidently with Taktapu and Rebo Orangatahi to create trusting and supportive connections. Create care standards that uphold the rights and dignity of Taktapu and Rebo Orangatahi. Improve mental health supports that are rainbow affirming and mental health supports in general, let's be honest. <laughs> Improve access to gender affirming healthcare and other forms of rainbow responsive healthcare, including for intersex tamariki and rangatahi. Um, we recommend that Oranga Tamariki support caregivers and whanau to create safe and affirming environments for takatapui and rainbow tamariki and rangatahi. Ensure safe caregivers for takatapui and rainbow rangatahi. Um, support takatapui and rainbow tamariki and rangatahi wider support systems, hapu, iwi, schools and communities um, commit to further research and data collection. Because this was the first of its kind in that research. Yes, I think that is us for the summary. Yes. We need to click stop sharing. How do I do that? By clicking stop sharing. (laughs) Pass it over to Moira. Kia ora, thank you so much. Kara and Albany, um, that was a really great summary and really appreciate your um, your work um, on this kaupapa. Um, we're going to move into a panel discussion. Um, our community design team might switch their cameras back on at some stage soon. Um, and the full report uh, with the full list, list of recommendations will be up on our website directly after this launch as well as today's slides. I want to move into a panel discussion. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the chat or in the Q&A function and we'll pick those up and, um, and answer them. I can see a few have come through already, which is really wonderful. But I guess just to start with, um, could we all briefly introduce ourselves and say what's one thing that you hope to see come out of this project? Um, and I realised that I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning of the session. So um, maybe I'll start just to say, um, he uri tine no te rārua, ko ngai te poto ki motu karaka te hapu, ko Moira Kluni toku ingoa. Um, I'm Moira, I'm project lead at Tingaka Kahukura, which is a national initiative around um, making Aotearoa safer and better, more inclusive and more, um, yeah, more safe for rainbow and, and takatapui people to grow up and access support. Um, 
And I guess one thing I would hope to see is really backing up what you were saying that our research participants were asking for, which is real change. Um, I really hope that we see Orang Tamariki committing to a, a multi-year action plan <laughs> program of work around this. Um, you had two pages of recommendations there, but that was a summary, you know, like there's about, I can't remember how many there are, 30 or something. There's a whole range of things that need to happen. So um, I'm really hoping to see that um, Orang Tamariki is able to take this seriously and really invest in it. Um, so that's me. I'll take who to go next, and maybe if you can just each pick a um, person to go after you. Um, John, over to you. Kia ora, um, ko John Kennedy Tokungua. I'm a Pākehā cis um, man. I use he, him pronouns. I'm at uh, Waipapa Te Maitaro, the University of Auckland, in the School of Counselling, Human Services and Social Work. So um, I was really privileged to be able to um, join this mahi um, in the community design team. And one of the, the things, there are so many things that, that I want to see come out of this report, but, but one of them is better support for um, kaimahi, social workers, carers to provide the kind of sustaining, um, thriving environments that our whakataakui and rainbow rangatahi deserve and have a right to um, in their practice. I'm going to pass to Ahi. Kia ora koutou. Um, my name is Tiahi Wehongi. I work for Gender Minorities Aotearoa, which is a national transgender organisation. Um, and I have a tendency to ramble, so I'll keep this actually really short. I think that the, the main thing that I want to see come out of this, I mean, basically all of the recommendations, um, they're all really good, um, but um, I suppose that it's particularly that Māori, like young Māori, um, trans and other rainbow people, takatapu people need to be placed with Māori carers who are um, rainbow friendly. And, and also that um, in particular, carers who are looking after transgender young people really need to understand what it looks like to support them because it will be you know, it's a it's quite a different road from supporting lots of other young people. So I think um yeah, that will be my main thing. And I will pass it to Maggie. There we go. Uh kia ora koutou. my name's Maggie. Um I'm a neurodiverse queer person doing a PhD with the School of Psych at Vic. Um I think the, the main thing sort of echoing what other people have said is that I, I hope that we're able to honour the wishes of the young people that trusted us to take part in the research uh, by seeing tangible change, because um, I know a lot of sort of um, young people who have care experience sort of have that sort of distrust, so I hope that we're able to sort of honour them and, and see um, tangible change. Um, I will pass to Tommy. Uh, it's it's wonderful to be here with the with the design team to share this research with everyone. Um, I think considering what everyone said, uh, I think I will add that um, I would like to see research like this continue to grow and we continue to learn about the research process because often in youth development or youth work or even child rights work um, across all the intersecting issues around disability, um, indigenous, uh, indigenous sort of connection with, uh, you know, all the decolonizing work that needs to go on and plus rainbow. Um, what I've learned, what I've found really beneficial to work in and be part of this is to understand more about the leadership from Albert, Cara, and Josh, and having research being um, researchers meeting uh, research participants who have an understanding of each other's worldview, and then also including the work, working alongside um, others in the design team who came along as uh, rainbow experts, being having care experience. So some that has you know and 
themselves and having that historical experience within the group. I just want to put it, that's the thing I think that's important about this particular research that I found um, beneficial. So I just want to thank the team for that leadership. And of course, this report is needing to be more and needing to be everywhere. And um, I have a, you know, I'm pretty passionate about making sure that happens. So um, <laughs> when this is, you know, this is a launch, but I think there's so much more we can do. So I really look forward to that work. Kia ora. And I have to pass it on to someone. Sorry, I'm doing two things at once here. I'll pass it on to Kevin. Uh, kia ora tato. Thank you, Tommy. Um, <laughs> hi, Kevin Hamu Toku Ingwa, uh, representing Te Whanapana Trust, a um, Takatapui um, community organisation that really is. Uh, out there to help build our community, uh, Tagatapu and the wider Rainbow community, um, and allow our stories to be told and to leave a legacy uh, for others to follow. So this particular um, research uh, really fits into that element of telling our stories. And so you're hearing the stories uh, from Tagatapu and Rainbow uh, Rangatahi, who are in care. And so I, I endorse what others have said. You know, we really do need to um, ensure that their voices not only just heard, but acted upon in a manner that is um, embracing um, for them and for people in care right now, but also for those um, coming along as well. Uh, that's all I really wanted to say was to endorse what has been said, um, but it is really important. I know with some of my hats on as a researcher, that it is very difficult to engage with youth in general uh, and Tagatapui uh, and others of uh, of um, who have um, dangatahi or, or others where around sexual orientation or gender identity or way gender is expressed, and those who have variations of sex characteristics which we know as uh, intersex, really difficult to engage. So. It's really important that these voices uh, are treasured uh, in that way. And I really uh, thank um, our young design team who, who have uh, gone out there, put themselves out there um, to, to gather this information for you. Kia ora tate. Who do I need to pass that back to Maura? I've lost count. <laughs> it's okay, maybe Joshua, how are you? Yeah, kia ora Joshua. Kia ora. Uh, yes, so I'm Josh and I'm a neurodiverse rainbow person um, and I was one of the peer researchers on this report as well. Um, and I'm currently working as a law clerk at Waitamata Community Law Centre based in Auckland. My hope is that this leads to real and actionable change um, and in turn creates a care space that ensures our takata, pui and rainbow tamariki and rangatahi feel seen and they feel heard and they feel valid in their identities and can feel uh, and can live free of discrimination, stigma and abuse so they can be flourishing young people. Who, who do I, who's next? Thank you. I think, um, Jules, what are you hoping to see come from this? Uh, kia ora tato. Um, we shared 46 recommendations with Oranga Tamariki and we want to see them all um, <laughs> uh, be acted upon. Um, and I also hope that some of the more systemic changes where uh, Oranga Tamariki needs to partner and work across government um, all are also worked along so, you know, that are prioritised as well. And yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, Tara and Albert. Kia ora. Um, we've introduced ourselves, but um, I did have hopes and hopes, hopes, uh, um, was that this um, type of partnership based mahi continues in the sector, um, that Oranga Tamariki continues to um, prioritise or understand the need for um, people with lived experience to be at the front of um, the mahi within the sector and um, the importance of education and awareness around intersectional voices and supporting those identities. Gosh, summing up my argument from the other meeting we had, are you? Mm -hmm. Stealing my points. Yep. 
I am with Kara on this, you know, as somebody who falls under multiple different intersections and has been working with OT in these systems for the last four years, roughly. And while I was in care myself, it's just seeing a lot of these projects and the most I come out of these, uh, hope comes out of these is to see OT put more of their money where their mouth is within their staffing, within their interactions, within their understandings, not just training and understanding, but I hope to see the flow on effect of more intersectionality being actually visible in the workspace there within our social workers, within our kaimahi, because young people deserve to have people who are going to understand them and have their best interests at heart making decisions for them. And that includes knowing what it's like. Deserve to be able to exist in a safe space. Yoda, thank you. It doesn't sound like too much to ask, hey. Um, we've had a few questions come through. Thank you so much. Feel free, like keep, do, please do keep adding your thoughts and questions to the chat or to the Q&A function and we'll um, try and answer as many as we can. But um, just one general question we had was, uh, was there anything that really stood out to you in the findings or was there anything that surprised you in what we found? Um, and I might talk and give people a minute to think. Um, just to say that in a lot of ways, this isn't surprising. Um, we know through community experience with working with young people who are in care, as well as um, the other research that we've seen in this space, things like the Youth 19 study, the Identify survey that um, took it up, we remember young people are more likely to be engaging with Oranga Tamariki than their peers, and they're more likely to be worse off um, across a whole range of health and social indicators. And We've kind of heard these stories before, and I think there's, you know, social workers, people working across Orang Tamariki, across the system, who um, know some of these things as well. Um, so it's really, I think this research has been a chance to really dig in and really hear from some young people in depth about what's going on for them and what their experiences have been like. But um, there's not really anything in here that surprises me as such. Um, but did anybody else want to tackle that question? Maybe just come off mute if you have thoughts. Yeah, I guess I was thinking, um, yeah, like Moira said, it, it wasn't really uh, super surprising. Um, I know, I mean, at Gender Minorities Aotearoa, we do 3,000 individual peer supports each year, and some of them are with young people who are in care or have recently been in care. And some of the things that, um, because because, that, because it happens often, we, we aren't surprised, but that some things that are, essentially quite shocking um you know things like young people being I guess just not supported to get the health care that they need I think that's a really big thing for because we're usually talking to the ones who are trans it's um you know gender affirming health care is so essential um, and quite often they're not being supported or they're being stopped from you know get from getting that health care that they need um so I think in a lot of ways that's quite shocking. Um, and I think another really big point to me that was really important that showed in the research was um, people not feeling like there was someone who they could talk to about the problems that they were having. Um, and I know, yeah, I know that, I mean, I was also in care when I was young and that was definitely the case for me. And I think that showed really strongly um, in the research as well. Uh, it's something that yep, should be shocking. Thanks, Ahi. We had somebody in the chat too saying um, that it was surprising to them to hear about social workers blocking gender affirming care. I think that one quote that we had up on the slide was like, oh gosh, I can yeah, I can imagine that happening and it's it is shocking to hear about. Um, did anybody else have thoughts about what we found surprising or what stood out? Um, for me, I think it was just like the overall denial of letting young people in care just like letting them be kids um, because they had to take on roles to be like educators and advocates for themselves um, just to receive you know baseline support um, and that sort of like a shift in power dynamics I think um, yeah really stood out to me. Thanks Maggie. Anyone else? Alvini and Cara, did anything surprise you too? 
Honestly, every time people ask me this question about surprise, being surprised, I'm like, I have worked on so many projects related to care experience issues, talked to so many other young people in care, been a young person in care that it's like, nothing surprises any me anymore. Not even disappointed, which is messed up because it should be. But I just go, yep, I was expecting that. And I am acknowledging it's like that balance between acknowledging that that is a messed up thing and not accepting it. But also I was expecting it with everything we found I was expecting. Yeah, I think um, working because um, Albie and I both do, sorry, Albany and I both do um, mahi across the um, care sector uh, on various different things. And I think like Ahi said, like you do eventually become desensitized when you're working in a space where this is a constant, um, so these are issues that are coming up all of the time for our community. Um, so it's really shitty to have to admit that it's not surprising. Like, yeah. Yeah. You get over the surprise with the first 20 people you talk to with the same shitty experiences. It's not surprising anymore. Yeah. Thank you. Joshua, did you have anything to add there? You've done work with the care I system as well. Hey. Exactly the same response, not surprised, not surprised at all, which is really sad. Mm, thank you. John, did I see you had something to add? Um, yeah, I think the thing that really stood out for me um, was the sort of intersectional reality of this and that for the Whakataku and Rambo young people in care, they had so many care placements. Um, and so there was that continued emotional labour that Maggie, you reference, and Albert, um, and Cara, and Josh, you're all familiar with, that those young people were having to do each time they had to interact with a new part of the care system. And just the kind of um, the grinding um, inanity of that, you know, was, was really, it really stood out to me um, as something that needs to change really urgently. Um, and what was possible when you had a really good experience in the care system. And so it's not like this isn't possible. We just need to design the system better to do it justice. Hilda, thank you. Um, looking through our list of questions and there's just a whole range of things. Um, with that big list of recommendations that we've put forward, how would we implement this within Oranga Tamariki, considering Oranga Tamariki also has to navigate budgets and things and other priorities? I think that's a question for Oranga Tamariki to answer, really, to have a think about um, what's the most realistic within their sphere of influence. I think um, if you're looking through the recommendations, they're not. Uh, a lot of this doesn't feel like it is really rocket science. Like when we when you hear from young people saying, um, <laughs> just being loved, just being accepted and supported for who they are um, makes the world of difference. There's not necessarily a big cost associated with that, right? Like some of it might be to do with um, having a closer look at who is in these positions um, and what support they have to make sense of rainbow experiences. That's a bit of an off the cuff response from me, but does anybody have thoughts about how Oranga Tamariki could take this forward um, within the list of other priorities that they're juggling. Yeah, I think, I guess, sorry, you go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, I think in part, like, um, like what you're talking about as well is making sure that, or, you know, what the, what the research is also talking about is making sure that um, the carers are aware about what rainbow people's experiences are or what or what it means to care for someone who is a rainbow person or a trans, you know, or takatapu person. So it's a, um, so there are some simple ways to start that, like developing training, um, training and sort of guidelines, um, which could be given to carers so that they, you know, are prepared for that. So they've got somewhere to start from. So it's not that the young person is starting from absolutely nothing or from 101 with carers. Um, and, you know, those sorts of things, like, um, as an executive director, I completely understand having to manage budgets. Um, and what we do when we don't have enough money for something is we go out and find that money. 
and I think um you know and you know and of course you have to prioritize but there's often solutions that are yeah like Moira says not rocket science it's stuff that can be done it's um not extremely expensive to carry out and it will have a really big impact even though it's a simple you know even though it's a, a simple step thank you and I should acknowledge that Orang Tamariki you know commissioned this report and did want to hear from from us and from young people so there's um there's some interest there in taking it seriously as a priority Jules you had something to add there yeah, just briefly, they have accepted the recommendations and there's been a few comments in the chat which I think are really useful, you know, acknowledging that this is absolutely a priority as a good starting point. And I love the idea of establishing a community of practice for rainbow friendly kaimahi. So I think there's, yeah, there's some great stuff coming through. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I really love this question about the research process itself and I wonder what reflections people have um, sitting with the comment that the researchers didn't hear from rangatahi who were in unsafe care, um, even this wonderful team couldn't reach them. Um, maybe after seeing this work done safely and delivered and received safely, future research will reach them. But what would that research need to look like? How could we be hearing from these people um, who are in unsafe situations or who are having really negative experiences? Um, I have a thought, but I think I'll be Albany and Cara. Um, you look like you <laughs> have some reflections on that. Um, I think the number one with interacting with members of our community um, in any capacity is the need to create a safe and trusting relationship um, where they feel that their what they share is going to actively be like acknowledged and treated as like. I guess the tapu that it is, like it is such a um, taonga that they're sharing by doing, putting themselves in that situation and by like actively um, sharing experiences that generally aren't very good. Um, and I think a lot of the time when you're growing up in care, you're consistently put into dynamics where, or like situations where you, speak you out have that relation yes. yeah yeah you're encouraged to do that and to trust that person and then it doesn't it bites you in the ass yeah yes you're not respected and it's not followed up and um so creating like the very first step is creating um the, like establishing the fact that there are trusted people to talk to um that when it comes to the mahi that we've done, the reason that it is safe is because it is the affected communities uh, doing the mahi, like we're doing this for our community. So we have that understanding and that empathy. Um, and that's across our whole design team. I'm not talking exclusively about the care experience people within it. Um, like that's just my number one for it is creating, putting in the work, actively putting in the work to create a relationship that is respected. And um, yeah, Alps. Yeah, it's about yeah. trust. Yeah. Thank you. Did others have reflections on that question? How do we? How would we help establish trust to hear from young people? Um, my one reflection was that. Orang Tamariki, the care system, has a complaints process in place and one place you could be looking for some of this insight is the complaints process that you already have, you know, if young people are, um, that's not going to be, you're not going to be hearing from young people who are so unsafe they can't make a complaint or to, who don't feel like that they can trust that process, but um, there'd be some insights there, you know, we heard through this process of an, a situation with a complaint around um, treatment to do with um, a trans young person where the complaint just really wasn't followed up and so that insight is there um, if you go looking as well so that's one source that I would say but um, maybe we'll start to move into wrapping up um, we've got such a big group that um, it's hard to kind of get around everybody in terms of answering questions but I wonder if we could do a closing round of what's one thing that we want people to take away from this conversation if we just take a few moments to answer that question Briefly, who wants to go first? It's one thing. 
I think I'm um, just summarizing some of the other questions that are coming through. There's a whole range that are around really practical suggestions. I think this is sparking a lot of um, ideas for people about what they could be doing in their roles. People are saying things like, could we get some training? Could we establish a community of practice for rainbow friendly kaimahi? Potentially do in service for our nursing team. So there's a lot of um, a lot of the questions are really reflecting that um, a lot of you kind of have ideas already and know the answers and can think of ways that um, that this could be brought into um, into your practice. And I think it's a big. There's a lot of work that needs to happen. There's as Jules was saying, 46 recommendations. Um, and some of those are going to need some investment and some time and some thought, but. Um, it's going to really need also a lot of people on board to help make it happen. So I just would encourage anybody who's here to think about what's possible within your own work and within your own sphere of influence and um, think about how you can take that forward. So that's my little reflection. Uh, who wants to go next? Nobody's unmuting. John, what's one thing you think people should take away? Or Tommy unmuted if you're not ready. Did you say me? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just, okay. just having one of those moments. Um, I think, yeah, the thing I, I'm just building on that point, um, the thing I want people to take away is that we need to do something about this. And this project was about understanding what Pakataku and Rainbow Young People wanted OT to know. There's another project which is around how is OT going to respond to this work? And we've done the bit of kind of outlining, you know, the terrain and where we want to see things changed. And there will be some really easy, easy gains. And then there will be some things that are a lot more complicated. And especially that stuff where it's cross-government stuff. We heard from young people who are having obviously terrible experiences in the health system, terrible experiences in the schooling system. So there's some of that stuff that's going to require a longer term kind of period of engagement. And my reflection is that we've kind of like established some trust and, and it shouldn't be under um, emphasized how much work the project needed to establish trust, both for the rangatahi that were involved, um, as well as for the community members, as well as for Oranga Tamariki. And so that that reflection that you know we've articulated I think is is really important but I also think there is this next step which is around okay how do you design an OT to be responsive to Takataka Rambo young people given what we're able to share with you and yeah I love that Moira that everyone actually has a role to play in doing that. Thank you. Tell me did I see that you were ready to reflect? Yeah, I just wanted to reflect a funny little thing um, that I noticed and was the difference for me was in working on this project, just from a personal perspective, was having the opportunity for us all to get a little grumpy together and to sort of really name what the barriers were. And like, I think that's a part of community action with research models, but, you know, um, as a team, we were getting grumpy, but I think that's because the young people whose voices we've, we've sort of come across or meet and the people in our communities we meet, you know, we're getting, like there's a lot that gets put on the shoulders of the community advocate. And so we had to really kind of point out the time that it took to, for us to make these decisions. Also the fact that we weren't, we can't represent everyone in this one piece of research, all of those things, um, sometimes cause us to be a bit grumpy. And so I just want, I just like the grace of being allowed to be grumpy about some stuff. And that, that's a normal behavior in research and professionalism. Um, and I remember this from early on in some work where we used to work with um, phone lines and stuff. And, you know, when, when trans people started calling outline and all of the volunteers on the phone line were like, everyone's really mad and angry. It's like, well, that's, that's a place that they can be mad and angry and that's okay. So can we work together to allow us to get all of this off our chest to sort of say what we see and think? And um, I think that's the interesting part of the research and possibly um, we needed a little time uh, to do that. 
uh, sort of difficult work or uncomfortable work. And I think for all of us, we had moments where like, oh, should I be here? What does this mean? How, you know, we get, but we do lots of debriefing and that's, I, I don't know, that to me feels like we've created a little family environment that helps hold this research. So I just think they're really important elements of the practice. Kia ora. thank you. We had a comment in the chat that if being grumpy saves a child's life, that it's worth it, which is really lovely. And I think, I mean, if you look at those findings, there's reason to be grumpy, right? Like the situation isn't acceptable. There's a lot of work to do. So I think, I think you're right, Tommy, that space that we've had to kind of bring some of those emotions forward has been really, um, really valuable and important. Um, Maggie, what's one thing you think people should take away from this conversation? You knew, you knew that I had written down a, a response. Um, I think it's really great that the like the report has you know been conducted and you know like more sort of research is being done in this area. But I think there's still a long way to go. Um, I think it's very much like a community effort. Like although you know Oranga Tamariki are, are like a core focus of this report, they're not the only ones that are mentioned in this report. So there's you know people that work in schools, people that work in external organisations, and I think like improvement needs to be done community wide to to shift towards um, positive change. So I think that's what I want people to sort of take away from this. Um, yeah. Thank you. All right, I'll do a thing. So I was just thinking, you know, that it took two years to develop this whole process from kind of getting the community, um, uh, what is it called, community advisory group, that's not what it's called, together um, and and starting the, the process. Uh, and, you know, possibly Oranga Tamariki was doing things on this prior to that in order to come to the point, you know, where where that could happen. Um, and so I guess I, I guess what I'm thinking is that it takes such a lot of time to get something. So to make this report took more than two years. Um, and, you know, because everything does take a lot of time, especially if you do it well, you know, if you do it um, in ways that are, that work well and are safe and good for everyone. Um, so it's really important for this work to be always happening, for there to be always work on the go, um, to you know, towards making, um, you know, towards improving these outcomes. So it's very, um, because I think, I guess I'm just thinking about how we know that things take a lot of time and we know that there's a lot of work to be done and sometimes that means things don't get done. Um, and so it's just kind of, I guess my point is just kind of that we have to make sure that we are on it at all times so that this work is getting done and then two years down the track or three years or five years down the track things are changing so it's um yeah so I guess my takeaway is just that we need to make sure that we're that we're working towards making these changes like promptly yeah mm, mm, mm. and give it like giving it the time it needs as well in the sense say, mm. like that long-term commitment to the kaupapa um Thanks, Ahi. We're going to go slightly past one. I'm sorry, but if you if you need to duck away, we are recording, so you can catch um, the end of the session later if you need to. Um, but I do want to give everybody a chance to reflect on what they think people should take away from this conversation. Um, Joshua, did you have thoughts to add? Um, I really hope people recognise that, like, the importance of this, and it it's it should be a priority and at front of mind for those in OT. Um, young people deserve the right to live as young people and um, Rainbow Rangatahi and uh, Takatapui Rangatahi deserve to live as young people. And at the moment there, it's clear through this that they're living, they're having to do things that shouldn't be required of young people and they're they're getting their childhood taken away from them so i just hope people remember that as they go forward and create actionable change thank you so much for that reminder um albany and cara maybe what's one thing each of you 
would like to see people take uh, away from this? Oh, I remember what I was saying. Do you remember yours? Yes. That's, there's a lot. You've got first. Um, mm, shit, as soon as I'm put on the spot, my brain's <laughs> like, no, we're done. But no, I wanted to uh, use this space to, I noticed that we have a lot of um, people on here that work with organisations that work with care experience Rangatahi and um Rangatahi that are part of the Rainbow and Takatahui community and so I just wanted to um again highlight the fact that um our Rangatahi told us like very clearly that having an important and authentic supportive connection in their life makes a huge difference just having one so keeping that right at the front of your mind when you're interacting with members of our community and um, holding yourself accountable to the authenticity, I think, and the love that you're able to give to the young people that you're working with. Um, yes. Um, yes, and my point was similar. For a minute there, I was like, you took my points. But um, my point is that, you know, when you are working with care experienced young people, you need to be mindful that often, especially for those of us who are older, who are teenagers and maybe in group homes or things, we are very socially isolated and disconnected. So, um, you know, being able to be there and being like making sure that you're available and that we know we can talk about those things like if it is a position you are in to be able to build strong relationships, um, that makes a huge difference across the board for care experienced young people and having their rights met because like you can't just assume somebody else is there or doing something. You cannot assume that. It's a lot of the time you have a strong connection with a young person in care, that connection is keeping them alive. Oh yeah. Getting them through it. And hold that importance with you because it yeah mm. yeah thank you and yeah thanks again to everyone for being here today and for your commitment to this co-papa um kevin what's your takeaway you're silent my friend am i still silent no my, my takeaway is, is trust and support, really. Trust and support all the time. Um, it's the most important ingredient. Uh, not only um, trusting in what this research is saying, but trusting in what people are able to do um, to help our rangatahi and tapatapu in care, to create resources, to share findings, to share information, uh, I think is really also key. Um, so that's really my five takeaways, <laughs> Moira. But um, I'm just wondering, is there further uh, that we need to go through or would you like me to uh, pass it on to another or? Oh, I just, I think Jules hadn't had a chance to say right. any last things. Kia ora, Jules. Oh, kia ora, Kevin. Um, my, I, not only, but the one thing I have, and we're short on time, is that this has been rangatahi-led. So everything that happens next needs to be rangatahi-led. So, so. Thanks so much for that. Um, just going to share a quick slide to say that we have a new page on Tingaku Kahukura's website about Rainbow and Takatapui, Rangatahi and Stake Here, and this is where you can find our report. Um, if you'd like to read the whole thing, um, that's up now. <laughs> um, published today, um, hot off the presses. Um, thank you again so much for being here. Thank you to the community design team. Thanks especially to Albany and Cara for your presentation today. Um, thanks Kevin for helping us to hold this space safely and appropriately and thanks um, Jules for pulling this all together and to everybody to all of you to all the people that Jules acknowledged earlier um, thanks again I'll stop sharing there and just um, hand back to Kevin to close this process off um, kia ora kia ora tātou okay. so um, kua mihia. 
uh, and to conclude our session today with a um, again a very simple um, karakia, um, which talks about our work is finished for the moment, but we bless upon us all, our friends, our families, peace to the universe, and we're alive. So in saying that, kua mutu amato mahi morti nei wa, manaki tia mai manakoto o mato hoa o mato fano. Ayo kitera aurangi tihei maudi ora kia ora tato.